Good afternoon and welcome to Arts America, where we bring you the best arts programs from St. Louis and around the country. First up, we take a trip to the Chaumette Winery in beautiful St. Genevieve County, where we meet a chef who is truly a master of the culinary arts. <music> Intuition and instinct is something that is, is one of those intangibles in the kitchen that, that can't be taught, that it's impossible to inspire. Visualizing what we do, I think, is something that maybe a sculptor could understand. That They look at this block of wood or stone and already have their mind figured out of where they're going to chip away next. I do that a lot. I'm always thinking about what's going to happen the next day, what we have, what, what farmers are bringing in. And, um, and so I, I tend to visualize in my head and chip away at that block of stone figuring out what I might make for the next day for our specials and utilizing some of the wonderful things that were given to me that day or I know are coming the next day. But I also think that you also eat with your eyes, you know, pretty food tastes better. Hence the reason why we use so many colorful local ingredients so that the, uh, the, the palette or my canvas, if you would, is unique and different and interesting and textually um, pleasing to, to, to ingest. The idea is what grows together goes together. And so what we do is we try to not only farm within 35 miles of Chalmette, but also to find things that are unique to our area. This is Truck Garden headquarters here in this part of Missouri. We have farmers that are specialize in this and have been growing these kinds of heirloom products for years and years. And they come to Adam and they say, what do you want me to grow? And he's got a big list and in many cases he supplies them with seeds. This time of year we've got everything in the that you can imagine under the sun. Hard squashes from an early fall, tomatoes from a, a late summer. And so this area of the world does lend itself terribly well to a diversity of, of a cornucopia of so many different things. Steve and Veronica Beji produce artisan goat cheese on their farm in Bloomsdale, Missouri, not far from Chemet and are one of Adam's main sources for locally produced and handcrafted foods. She's making is definitely an art form. It's also a, a science, uh, and you, you combine the two uh, to, to create the, the types of cheeses that we're creating. We typically produce all French-style cheeses, uh, some fresh and most of them aged. Uh, we have many styles uh, aging from just a few weeks to a year or more. We've actually studied some of the um, techniques and the ways that goat cheese has been made um, for hundreds of years. One of our recipes actually dates back to the 12th century. It just hits all the sensory, you know, the aroma, the taste, you know, it's candy for the eyes to see a beautiful rind of cheese and it's actually changing its form from the time it's in the vat to the time it's in your mouth. And they're forming rinds, they're developing flavor notes, they're developing aromas, and it's a beautiful thing. Some of the cheeses that Adam uses uh, complement different types of dishes, uh, whether it's a hard cheese or uh, you know, a fresh, soft cheese, and also with the wines that they pair them with. Wine by itself is fabulous. Food by itself can be fabulous. But when you get a, a chef like Adam, um, who can pull my wines into his food, so that there are sometimes, uh, you don't know if you're eating or drinking because the flavors meld so well. That's what you call a wine and food pairing. Adam really does a nice job of, uh, of developing his menu to our wines. I can't develop wines to his menu. I'm a little more set in my ways with Mother Nature and that. But he's very flexible. You know, pairing with wine, it, it seems to become second nature, and I think a lot of the reason is because I get to taste the wine as it evolves. I get to taste the wine as a juice. I get to taste the wine as it ferments, as it's aging, right before it's finished and once it goes into a bottle. So I get to see the diversity of how much the wine changes. Um, and also, that diversity and that evolution allows me to, to purposely pick out nuances and create balance when we're pairing dishes that maybe necessarily wouldn't stand out. Adam and I both use our gut more than anything else. Um, the gut feelings come with a lot of knowledge and experience that we both have.
But when someone says, what did you do? I, uh, most of those answers aren't, oh, I did this. It's um, those decisions just kind of come off the cuff, just like Adam when he's cooking, finally says, eh, long enough or a little more. Well, one of the things is our herb garden here. We have this very large herb garden, lots of different varieties of, of some herbs that you don't see other places. The overall plan, the culinary aspect is, is, is simple. Is nothing tastes as good as when it's plucked from the earth moments before you have it. The oils of the herbs are fresh and they're fragrant. They, uh, they permeate most of everything they come near, including your fingers when we, when we, uh, when we pick them. They're unique. They are the art of what we do. And the art of what we do is not something that you can just look and touch, something that you ingest, that you taste, and feed your soul as well as your body. To be able to meld these herbs into the final products that we see here is truly an amazing art. And I, I call it an art, I believe it is that. When the dining room is full and the tasting room is kind of a low murmur and you hear all these you hear wine glasses clanging and, and people truly enjoying themselves and having conversation. And you look out and you see this, this crowd. Um, knowing that I made most of those people really happy, um, that, that feeds my soul, that, that burns, that, fire, that fires the passion inside of me every single day.